Um, yeah, it's been a while. Welcome back, everyone, to the Little Miss Funeral YouTube channel. My name is Lauren Leroy. I'm a licensed funeral director in New York State, and I'm also known as Little Miss Funeral. So, basically, realize I haven't put out a video in a really long time. I could get into it, but, you know, life stuff happens, and I have missed you all. <laughs> Basically what it comes down to is I missed you all. I wanted to put up a video and kind of start interacting with YouTube again and this is the first video that came to my mind, something I've been wanting to record for quite a while, but basically just like never got around to it. And I'm not necessarily looking forward to this video because it's going to be a hot mess. So, um, if you couldn't tell by the title, today's video is all about looking inside of my makeup kit, my grip, um, basically what I use personally when I'm doing cosmetics on dead people. So, my actual grip looks like this. It's a uh, big silver. It's really heavy. And I got it from a friend of mine who's a funeral director. He basically ordered it from uh, for me. I think he ordered it from Eccles. I think that was the company that actually makes this exact one. Not 100% sure, but he gave it to me over eight years ago. And I've slowly been filling it up with goodies inside ever since. So let's jump into this video because there's a lot of junk in here and I just really need to organize it. Okay, so let's just open, I'm gonna open it up this way instead. <clears throat> open it up and get started. So it has, I know it's hard to tell in like the footage, but I'll try to pick it up and show you. It really is heavy. It is like one of these, I don't know, tiered things that uh, comes out. So hopefully you can like organize things and see everything that's in here. So I'm just going to kind of go through this, try to organize it a tad with all of you and talk about why I have what I have in here. Um, maybe I'll start at, maybe I'll start at the bottom Ooh, of everything in here. God, I have not organized this in so long and yesterday at work I was trying to get something out of here and I just was getting so frustrated because I couldn't find what I needed and that was when I was like okay you just need to organize this you need to go through it you just have to do it so I want to talk a little bit about um makeup for dead people to start off with I guess um in mortuary school you get introduced to a lot of cosmetics that is literally designed for dead human beings one of the most popular companies is called dodge dodge actually um sponsored my mortuary school and they kind of gave us all of our embalming fluids cosmetics and different things so i do believe it or not have cosmetics in this kit that are from my mortuary school days and it's stuff that i still use but the thing about it is cosmetics for, my my hands are going to get so dirty by the end of this video. Uh, cosmetics that are made specifically for dead people are very heavy, very opaque, not makeup that I would put on my own face. Um, they're designed specifically to go over discolorations and bruising um, and different pigmentations in the skin. So when you use cosmetics for dead people. Sometimes it doesn't give you the most natural look. Um, I've had a lot of people say to me, oh, when I viewed my loved one, they looked waxy. Sometimes this cosmetics can leave that waxy, heavy finish. Sometimes it's the only thing that we can use to cover different bruising and, and things, but I have a lot of different um, creams, and this is a super popular one. It's Dodge Suntan. Dodge Suntan is kind of like the white person makeup for every single white person out there. I'm not kidding you. It's supposed to make somebody look like they have like... I don't even have any in here hardly. It's supposed to make somebody look like they have just like a natural suntan and it doesn't, but it does the job. Some funeral homes that I've worked for in the past have loved this because it's easy. It's what traditional funeral directors use and they're comfortable with it. So I have a lot of makeup like that. Um, not my favorite. I will not personally use this on every single body, but I do use it, um, 
I do use it when I have to, like I said, to, especially on hands, like to cover bruising, it's very good. Some of my favorite makeup is made for dead people, but I think personally it gives a more natural um, hue to to the deceased. And something else that I want to just kind of straightforward, get off the table here, is that when I'm personally looking at my makeup kit, it is very Caucasian. I have worked for funeral homes who have dealt primarily with burying people who are white and Caucasian, so that is what my makeup kind of represents for lighter skin tones. This is not inclusive and it's not good for, um, people of color, frankly. One of my good girlfriends, Joel Simone Anthony, who's also known as the Grave Woman on YouTube, actually has a course teaching about um, African American uh, and black and people of color skin and hair, and I would highly recommend going to her YouTube channel to just educate yourself a little bit more because there's a lot of diversity that comes along with makeup and how my makeup kit right now is designed, unfortunately, is for the clientele that I have been serving in the past, which, like I said, for the couple of funeral homes I've, used, um, I've worked for in the past, not the one where I'm currently employed, it's been more of a Caucasian base. Anyways, uh, Echoes, which is one of my favorite uh, makeup brands from actually like a mortuary service uh, makeup brand. This is basically like foundation that you would find like in um, Sephora, but it's not because it's for dead people, but it has like a little pump on it. And I would just kind of put a little bit on my hand and then I would take like a makeup brush that I have and do foundation like I was actually doing foundation on myself but I just think that this brand personally is a little bit better um a little bit more natural than Dodge but everybody has their own personal opinion when it comes to makeup for dead people every funeral director embalmer mortician thinks that their way is the right way and everybody else is an idiot so I'm just showing you what works for me what I have in here currently um so I have a lot of a lot of the Eccles uh foundation in here too I don't always use a powder to mat down a deceased, but sometimes um, sometimes you have to because you don't necessarily, it just all depends. Every single body is going to be completely different, and every time I do makeup on somebody, it's completely different. Um, so when I do my own personal makeup, I like to take a finishing powder on top of my um foundation that I use. So once again, Eccles um, has a really good finishing powder. They come in different hues, but sometimes I'll just take like a little makeup brush and um, use this to kind of take a little bit of the shine down that the foundation can use. I also have a lot of normal people makeup like living people makeup and when I go into like Walgreens or Rite Aid I always try to look in the makeup aisle to see if there's anything that I can buy because it's very affordable and for somebody who dies a natural death um who isn't really like uh has like any sort of decomp or weird things going on with their skin normal makeup like you and I put on our faces is going to work perfectly fine for them so I have some um like I said just makeup that you would find in the store and powder works really well for for that too so I have a lot of powders I have um, some blush in my makeup kit as well I blush everybody and this one that I have is like a little bit of a shiny hue it's all really gross sorry guys but um, it is so unbelievably important, in my opinion, to put blush on both males and females because as we're living, we have natural rosy pigmentations on our skin. And if you just put like a matte foundation on somebody who's deceased, they're going to look waxy. So you have to highlight. It's very important to highlight um, somebody who is deceased. So I just take whatever sort of pink um, blush honestly, that I have, and you do the cheeks, 
you do the nose, you do the chin, and you do parts of the forehead to bring out those natural hues. For women, I go heavier on the blush that is on the cheeks just because we typically wear more makeup, not always, but we typically wear more makeup than gentlemen do. Um, and it's very important though to, to do all those separate highlights. I have some, not a lot, but I have some eyeshadows in my kit as well. Um, more just like natural colors, like browns, and then this one over here is going to be like a purple. Um, a lot of times when I ask families if their loved one wore eyeshadow, it's very rare that people... Um, say like yes we want this like big smoky eye typically people say like oh mom always look natural so in those situations i just have some like natural hue colors that i like to use just to add a little bit of color and then keep in mind also when you are viewing somebody in the casket their eyes are closed so you're seeing more of an eyelid than you would if you're just looking and talking with me right now because my eyes are open so you don't always want to go crazy on the colors because their eyelids are way more noticeable since you're viewing the entire thing than if you were just going to be talking to them in normal conversation and only seeing a portion of it. Oh, hold on. I want to go back, actually, because I just found um, some more blush that I use. And this is actually, I kind of forgot because that's how messy this kit is. Um, I kind of forgot that I had this. And it's from the brand Milani. I think I got this in Target. And it has three separate blushes but I have found that these have worked really well because they're more of like a natural flush color so I really like this brand for blush when I'm doing uh, dead people makeup other things that I have in this kit I have I think literally every shade of lipstick that you could ever think of. I mean, I probably have about 40 different lipsticks in here because lipstick is one of those things that is so personal. Uh, oftentimes, you oftentimes families tell me that they want something that's a lot more natural. Mom didn't wear a lot of makeup. She was a natural beauty, but they don't realize that like in life, our lip colors are more of a natural mauve, but sometimes when people pass away and with the embalming process and all of the chemicals that are being used, we just look very uh, gray and pale in those situations. So it is very important to add a lip color for both men and women. Now Dodge makes really nice lip colors. This one is called, believe it or not, Old Age, and it's something that is used for both like men and women it has like a little bit of a wax on it but you just basically would take a little brush do i have one here you basically take like a little lip brush and just lightly color in the lips with this natural old age color but for women sometimes they want to have more like of a pink or a coral or a red so i have so many different lipsticks in here to accommodate families with um different things, different colors that they may want to have. I have mascara in my kit and this one is just, is this, Mayb I have just a Maybelline mascara um, because it's very important in my opinion to make certain that after you're doing all of the cosmetics, you take care of the eyelashes. Oftentimes in this entire process you're getting powder and different makeup all caked on somebody's face and there are a couple of different things you can do. So for gentlemen, especially because they don't naturally, uh, I should say they don't normally wear mascara. There is, and I don't think I have it in here, you normally have a little bit of it in here. There is a chemical that we use in the industry called dry wash. This stuff is absolutely horrible for you, but it gets out stains and uh, discolorations and all different kinds of things. So if you take a little bit of dry wash, put it on a cotton ball and then slowly clean up the eyelashes for gentlemen. That is something that I always do. And then for women, I will do that to get the initial makeup off, but then I will put some mascara on. I don't often put fake eyelashes on women unless it's requested by family. So I don't have any fake eyelashes currently in my kit. Typically that's something the family would give me because those are so unique that I'd want to make certain what they're giving me is accurate. 
I have worked with some funeral directors where doing restorative artwork, they have actually put on um, fake eyelashes if somebody maybe battled cancer. Um, or was in some sort of an accident and I have worked with some amazing people who have done great restorative artwork with fake eyelashes, believe it or not. I have Q-tips in my kit because, once again, for dry wash, for cleaning up makeup, for trying to get like a little mistake out that I have done, those are awesome to have. I have a wax in my kit. Let me see. That's Kaline. I know I have wax in here somewhere. Did I already take it out? Lip wax. Okay, so lip wax is something that is awesome to have in your makeup kit. Sometimes during the embalming process, when we're closing the mouth of a loved one, sometimes it just doesn't want to stay closed or like, I don't know, just weird things will happen sometimes and the lip closure isn't as seamless as we would like it to be. So if you take just a little bit of lip wax and I have just honestly, it's like a wooden dowel thing. Um, I'll kind of take a little bit of lip wax and fill in any sort of crevices or, um, to smooth out what I want to smooth out. And then I'll put the lipstick on over that. I also have crazy glue in my kit because sometimes um, lips just won't stay closed. They need extra besides for the lip wax. Sometimes an eye closing doesn't stay closed. And even though it's not everybody's favorite choice, it's just having um, just that like padded it's going to stay closed so families aren't freaking out because nobody wants to come in and see their loved one with one eye open. It's just not what people necessarily want to see. I have so many makeup brushes in this kit. It's not even funny. I probably have about like 50 different brushes because each one is used for different things, whether or not it's foundation or getting in um, an eyelid or just literally painting on foundation, lips, blush, um, eyebrows. I mean, there is... I got a brush for everything <laughs> in here. Um, other things that I have in this makeup kit, I have a lot of different nail polishes for women in case that their family doesn't bring me um, a specific color. So I have a lot of different colors of um, nail polishes in here. I have a razor in case I need to get rid of quickly um, any sort of hair that is um, not supposed to be where it's supposed to be. I have a tie to go pen in case I get any makeup, God forbid, on somebody's outfit or the casket itself. Um, I have baby powder. So oftentimes I will use baby powder to mute um, a color. So for instance, if I put a lip, a lip stain or a lip color on a gentleman and if it just looks too much like makeup and not as natural, I can take a little bit of baby powder and it just like mutes everything. So I have this in my makeup kit. I also have a lot of tape. Um, so if I need to... Um, like when it's coming to like somebody's neck, if the outfit's not laying right, or if I need to kind of like tape some plastic down or something like that. I have a lot of tape in this kit as well. I have scissors in here. I have a toothbrush. This one's kind of weird. Um, I have a toothbrush in my kit because one time I had a woman, um, and actually this can be used for men too, but I had a woman who had a little bit of gray hair. So I actually dipped this toothbrush into some eyeshadow um, color that I had that was brown, and I used it to kind of just fill in the gray hairs because I wasn't able at that time to, and the hairdresser wasn't able at that time to dye their hair. So to get rid of the gray hairs, a toothbrush was works really well in order to act as um act as like a brush for that and I'm trying to see if I have like anything else that's like random in here um I have safety pins safety pins are like a big thing too because um when you are taking care of like an outfit once again maybe something's just not laying right how you want it to lay so I have safety pins in here I have rubber bands in here because we will sometimes use them to keep somebody's hands together if you put them on their thumbs their thumbs can kind of then 
stay in place so you get that like natural I know I'm like not naturally laying right now but um, it just kind of keeps the hands in place if they won't stay for the purpose of the visitation so I have little little rubber bands in there too um, I have eyeliners eyeliners and um, eye brow colors in here too um, oh I have hair gel for gentlemen in case I need to use um, some gel to get their hair to stay and then I have some normal brushes and combs to comb hair and then I have makeup removers as well in case I make a mistake or I'm doing cosmetics and I'm just totally not happy with it I'll take some off and start again so that is basically that's basically it that's basically it um, <laughs> I know it's not the most exciting stuff, but I need to organize this, so I'm going to kind of do a little panning view of showing you what I have taken out, what I'm working with, and then I'm going to go back over it when I'm done organizing it so you can kind of see um, what, I, what I have done as well. So just one moment, please. Okay, so this is some of the makeup that I've taken out already. Um, all different Kalon creams, natural makeups, and then this is going to be the makeup kit itself. So, not super organized, not super easy to find everything, so I'm going to now spend a little bit of time organizing this and then I will show you the final project final project final product okay so to you guys this might not look like super organized but for me this is so much more amazing than it was so over here I have some nail polishes and lipsticks more lipsticks some powder foundations and then over here I have some tape all of my blushes and mascaras, super glue. I have all of my brushes in here. And then down below, I have some foundations, both um, for living and deceased uh, people. I'm gonna try to focus, because I feel like it's not focusing. Sorry, so I tried to focus, it's not focusing like wonderfully, but down here I have some foundations. I have some uh, just like normal drugstore foundations and then my Eccles. I have some more powders down here. I have some more, can't focus, I'm so bad at focusing this camera. I have some more tied to go pens um, and then my Dodge makeup more Dodge makeup over here with my powders. I have a lot of powders. And then down there are actually the um, eyeshadows with some more eyeshadows and Q-tips over here because I don't use those as much. Now, the only things I'm missing are my uh, hair, my hair gel and my makeup wipes. And I will put those honestly like right here because then, I'm trying to focus again, then these will just close. I'm trying to do it one-handed. Trying to do it one-handed, it's hard. And then my makeup kit closes and it's all nice and neat. Yay! So if you've watched up to this point, I just want to say thank you because I do realize that this whole video has kind of been a mess, but I am not used to YouTube anymore, so I'm trying to get back into the swing of things, and uh, this was just something that I really had to do didn't want to do and just thought I would take you all along for the ride. So if you did enjoy this video, you can always give it a thumbs up. I would love it if you would leave me a comment telling me what you thought or maybe different things that you would like me to show to, uh, show to you, explain to you, if there's something I can do to help educate you on death, dying, or the death care industry, and hopefully give me some inspiration to 
make another video for you guys in the very near future. I just always want to say thank you all so much for watching. I really appreciate all of your support even when I'm not putting out content on a normal everyday basis, but I'm always thinking about my subscribers on YouTube and thinking about how blessed I am to have the following that I do have. And I just hope to put out content for all of you that just educates you and hopefully makes you smile and makes you realize that death care industry workers are not necessarily scary people. So thank you all once again so much for watching this video. I will see you all next time.